So I thought, well, I might as well have a bit of a practice into motherhood. So I popped on the plane. My twin sister, she comes to pick me up in Glasgow. She, we're driving around and uh, she sees the look of horror on my face and she reassures me, darling, we don't live here. <laughs> <laughs> An hour later, we rock on into Morningside and she's like, what do you think of this place? And it's like, nice, nice buildings, anally pruned hedges. <laughs> Not that they're in the shapes of bums. <laughs> <laughs> Small backyards, you poor bastards, but wouldn't take a lot to round up the sheep. <laughs> so I go into her place, and <laughs> you know, people that own cats and dogs and children just don't know how bad their place smells. <laughs> so I try and open up some windows, get a bit of fresh air coming in, and um, it, it, it stuck. I'm like, Kenny, how do you open this window? Oh, I don't know, it's never been opened. It's like, how the hell can you people not open your windows? And I have been here for um, three weeks, and I, I did think of one of the reasons. I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> oh, that, that's right. Because it always fucking rains! <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I finally get this window open, and you guys got five layers of windows, and this wasp <laughs> comes in, like its whole existence, and the ancestors before it have to be hovering outside this designated window for the last 50 years. <laughs> and you <laughs> probably know it, and it sh Open the window, straight comes in. And so it's uh, fulfilled its ancestral destiny by spending five seconds in. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm on creepy crawly duty because I'm an Australian, of course, so if something's got more than four legs or no legs, which are probably just garden webs for you guys, <laughs> then I've got to get rid of it out of the house. And uh, quite lucky because I hear this girly scream coming from the bedroom. <laughs> I run in there and it's, it's Big Kenny up on the bed. It's a spider. You need a cater for this one. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> so like, don't worry, mate. I'll kill it with my phone. <laughs> and he's like, I've just met you. What do you mean you're going to flip it? <laughs> now, mate. Me thong. Where is it? <laughs> now just pop it back where a thong should never belong. <laughs> And I'm picturing this great big hairy thing the size of my hand, you know, hairier than a hippie's armpit, the big fangs dripping, and it's his little daddy long legs. I've got a poor, poor little bugger, and so I go gather him up and pop me out the window. And then I'm introduced to nappy changing. And uh, so I had a go at this, and Kenny's trying to guide me through it. And you know those, um, any mums in here, mums, dads, yeah. so people who've had something to do with little kids. Though those baby suits that they wear that have these fasteners that should be called frustrators. <laughs> and there's not just three of them on the crutch, there's 45 of them just up one leg. And this little bugger's tossing around like a death rolling crocodile. <laughs> With baby smooth skin, so you've got no chance of holding on to the little side. Anyway, I finally get it in there and I've lined up these frustrators, these little faster things. And there's none left on this side, there's ten left on this side. It's got this gaping, gaping hole at the back. And Kenny's like, what, what do you think, my son's a monkey? He's got a place for his tail. <laughs> anyway, it was like, it was good enough. So, and then in comes Toddler. <laughs> Welcome to toddlerhood. And he's holding his hand up in the air like this. <laughs> and uh, it's, I figure he's been in the Vegemite jar in the kitchen. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, don't you? <laughs> and then he announces, Auntie Wombus, I have something interesting in my nappy. <laughs> I was like, oh, darling, if you pulled out a juggling panda bear out of your nappy, that would be interesting. That's just goddamn, as Daddy would say, minging. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't understand why mums and dads find uh, that they give so much encouragement to their children when they're young and they start doing poos. And it's like, good job on your job, in Finley. Nice. <laughs> nice dump. Good boy. <laughs> and uh, the kids probably 
walking to sit and going, you guys are really easy impressed. <laughs> like, I'm just letting my uh, extraordinary assistant do its automatic processes, but I'll take the praise. And so, <laughs> Finley's exploring with his all, all his senses what's on his hand, and I'm just absolutely horrified. And uh, so I take the little bugger, I just pick him up and say, Mary Ann, between, how's your son? <laughs> and she's just all loving, not, not in the faintest bit. Um, you know, just cuddles him up and she's got poo up her random collar. Um, <laughs> and uh, she, she says to me, so, are you ready to have children? Do you think you want to be a mum? <laughs> and she, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to disappoint her because I know how much she wants her, her kids to have cousins. She wants me to breed. And I didn't mean to, it just came out of my mouth and just held me crutch and said, mate, I just want to sew it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for listening.